So, it sounds somehow normal what I'm presenting now, but I will do my best. Um, and I would like to share with you a few thoughts about our ideas we had in, uh, for the future mobility and for the future of the mobility of the BMW brand. Last year, for the anniversary, our design team was asked to build not one, but four concept vehicles, so one for each brand. Um, in the beginning of this year, we presented the BMW Vision Next 100. Last week, Mini presented their concept vehicle where they combined um, the maximum of individualization with um, car sharing. And they kind of melted it together, and the product was really fascinating. The same day, the Rolls-Royce brand presented their concept vehicle, and they showed how innovative technology like autonomous driving could enhance this, yes, sensational experience of being driven in the future. Um, in October, we will kind of um, round up our tour with uh, BMW motorcycles. As you know, BMW has been built motorcycles even longer than uh, cars, and um, we call it the great escape, and it means that through um, the innovative technology of the future, uh, we think we could enhance this feeling of driving autonomous, feeling free. Not just autonomous, sorry for that, um, dynamic, which is important. Today, um, however, I would like to um, focus on the BMW brand and focus on the BMW version Next 100. Um, the last years, the last decades, we were always producing the ultimate driving machines, limousines, roadsters, SAVs, the end products, and I think we did quite well. In the future, we would like to focus even more on the driver, and we would like to turn every driver into the best driver he or she ever was. We would like to come into the ultimate driver. Um, and we think modern technology can make this happen. Maybe, yeah, okay, it works. Thank you. Um, how can we do this? Um, we kind of developed or created um, a virtual co-pilot. We call it Companion. And the Companion is always online, is always connected. Uh, it, it's anticipating, learning every second, and it works like a filter for the driver and gives exactly that information to the driver which is needed at that particular point in time. And that's a big advantage for the interior because we think we don't need any switches, any buttons anymore, and we don't have any displays anymore. So what we did is, um, or what we're doing is, we are using the entire windscreen as a display, as a head-up display. How could this work out? We have a little movie in there. And maybe you're driving a curvy mountain road, you're having fun, and there's happening something on the road where we have to react. Let me take you through this, through a few pictures. As you can see here, um, it's just driving. You have the ideal line projected onto the street, you know the perfect speed, everything is fine. What you don't see, or what the driver doesn't see at that moment, in the next curve, there's an obstacle which the driver cannot see. The companion does. And he's kind of warning the driver through this movement, what you see in the dashboard, and through an information in the windscreen. The next step would be that the car is kind of correcting the course in order to avoid a collision with this obstacle. Let's come back from this beautiful road into an um, yeah, urban environment. And here as well, there could be a situation which might be dangerous where you have to re react. And um, again, the driver at that moment is maybe concentrated on the street. He's not really focused on what's happening, uh, happening outside in the surrounding. And there's the young um, guy on the bicycle, which is already on a collision course um, with the BMW. The companion already um, recognizes that. He's kind of warning in a subtle way, 
and the next step will be a really strong warning. So the driver has the chance to kind of react, to break down uh, yeah, soon enough in order to avoid a collision with the bicycle. So just two um, examples about how could we imagine the driver could be a better driver in the future. As you know, we think as well that drive the car can do more and it will do more in the future. And therefore, we kind of created two modes. The boost mode is the self-driving mode, as, you already, as I already explained, self-driving, fun to drive, everything like that. If the driver doesn't uh, want to drive in the future by itself, he just um, doing the handover, we're saying handover to the companion into the ease mode. And the handover happens by pushing the BMW logo, the steering wheel, the steering column, it's kind of disappearing into the dashboard. And what you can see in front of the windscreen is a part of the companion which flips up, which shows, OK, I'm ready. You can just do whatever you want in the car. Um, Something challenging in the future, maybe, if a car is um, driving autonomously, again, in an urban environment, let me push the button, yes, it works, um, the communication between a driver and a pedestrian, I think it's something which is really important in order to know, does he see me or not, or what happens? What is if the car is driving autonomously? I think, um, therefore, we need an information about that. And what you can see here, maybe a few pictures back again, you see, First of all, the car is showing that it's driving autonomously by this light, and the green indicator shows to the pedestrian, I have seen you, it's everything fine, just pass, and it's good. So from our perspective, from our design, from our design team, it's um, kind of really fascinating, um, creating so many different concepts. Um, and we think in the future, design will be minimum as important as today from our perspective. And I just would like to say a few words about the exterior design of the BMW Next 100. You see the front, it's highly recognizable from our perspective. You see the double kidney grills. Today they are used for as an air intake, so a function which uh, we need for a combustion engine. In the future, we think we could use this um, space in a different way, maybe for sensors or things like that. The headlights, not double round anymore, but somehow the signature is recognizable, really narrow, really precise, and um, it's the way how we could imagine we communicate the next generation, for instance, for laser light. From a side perspective, as you can see, sketches, and they are still fascinating. I didn't do those sketches. I cannot do those sketches in their quality. But what you see is they are, high, they are really highly emotional. You see these dynamics in the, in the body, really a compact body. Um, as we say, um, cap forward design, as well in the other perspective. You see the taillights are kind of sticking out of the body. You see the signature, the L-shaped signature of the BMW. In this perspective, and as well in the side view, you have uh, already seen that the wheels are covered totally. The rear, covering the rear wheels is not a big deal, it's not a big challenge. Covering the front wheels was really, yeah, interesting, and our engineers found an idea how to kind of connect the body with this cover of the steering wheel. So those little pieces were 3D printed parts, they are kind of connected, connected together, and yeah, it allows us to um, get a totally new appearance and something which could be something really outstanding. It's not just for design reasons. We did it um, for aerodynamics reasons, as you might know. And maybe you have a closer look at this perspective at the rear wheel. You see, um, we are saying the alive geometry is kind of changing in order to improve the aerodynamic figures of our car. That's really short and rough from my side what, um, what were our ideas for the future. Maybe not for the next 100 years, but maybe for the next 20 years. And as a design team, I promise we try hard to make this vision become reality as soon as possible. Thank you very much.